What's up guys? So it's been a minute since I did one of these types of videos. This one's going to be on why I think the housing market is not going to crash anytime soon, at least for the next couple of years. So I got some stats here I want to share with you guys. And this was off of a very, very good uh, YouTube page. And uh, all of the data actually came from government websites and, you know, Fannie and Freddie uh, Mac. And so we'll get right into it. So a lot of the time you'll see like clickbaity videos on YouTube and all over like, hey, the housing market's gonna crash and the forbearance and all this BS. And it's simply just not true. And so it starts off with like this. As of today in 2021, there is an estimated 1.3 million houses you know, available. In 2006, there was 3.7 million houses available. So almost, a third less is available in 2021 than it was in 2006. So what does that tell us? Supply is low. In 2004, 2005, and 2006, houses went up 48%. Pretty much call it 50%. That, that's, that's pretty crazy because on average houses rise around 3%, sometimes 5%. So to see such a big jump like that in 04, 05, 06, obviously the market was red hot, like extremely hot. In 2019 and 2020 and 2021, houses have raised in value or in price, however you wanna phrase it, 24%. 15% of that 24% came in 2020 alone. So that's literally half of what it was in 04, 05, 06. So we still have a lot of room to run. In 2020, a 30-year mortgage on average is 2.88% across the nation. Let's just call it 3%. In 2006, the average interest rate was 6.4%, so damn near double. The average home buyer is 31 years old. So why was 2006 the boiling point? Well, let's look, take a step back. In 1975, you know, 31 years prior, there was 3.1 million people, you know, born. And when they got to the age of 31, there's 3.1 million people seeking homes, and there was 3.7 million available. Obviously, there was more of a supply than there was of that demand. And what, what happened is essentially, well, you guys already know this, where in 2021, things went bust. There was an oversupply and under under demand. You take that same stat and apply it to 1990, my generation, probably yours watching the average age, you know, that's, you know, right now 30 to 35 years old. In 1990 alone, there was 4.2 million people born. So those same 4.2 million people are chasing 1.3 million homes versus in 1975 or 2006, there was 3.1 million people chasing 3.7 million homes. That's a huge difference, obviously. So in 2006, 50% of the loans that were given out were shit loans because they were all adjustable. And when adjustable mortgages, you know, what adjustable mortgage, if, if, if you don't know, it's just, hey, you're gonna pay 3% today, but in about two years, maybe a year, maybe three years, your, your house is gonna be due, whatever you, you borrowed, your mortgage is gonna be due, and you're gonna have to refinance at the higher rate. And well, what happened is a lot of people couldn't afford that higher rate, and then they had to walk away from the home. They also had negative amortization, which was also a little dirty trick, which meant, you know, essentially, instead of paying interest only, so let's say like a regular home was like 1200 bucks a month and your interest was 800, they would say, hey, you only gotta pay us 400 a month, but that extra 400 on the interest is gonna be added to the mortgage, which was just like a horrendous idea, but 14% of the, of the, of the, of the loans written in 2006 were the negative amortization. Well, in 2021, only 2% are adjustable rates and there is no amortization loan. In 2006, 31% of the people purchasing homes were investors. In 2021, only 20% are because the numbers don't make sense for all investors. So majority of the people buying are actually buying because it's a home that they want to live in. And uh, I'll, I'll take a second there to pause. When you're buying a home, it is an investment. I'm not gonna get that, you know, you know, be that guy that says, oh yeah, uh, buying a home is not an investment. 
It's an investment because over the long term, you're going to build equity. You can borrow against that equity. You can, you know, put your kids through school. You can take money out, start your business, you know, buy another rental, do stuff with it. But at the same time, if it's a home that you really, really love, it's okay to pay 20% more, you know, or 10% more, you know, for asking if you really want that home, because that's where you're going to raise your family. That's where you're going to raise your kids. That's where your friends are going to come over. Like that's, that's, it's a part of your life. It's not like we're buying a rental and all the numbers have to add up because we have to make a return. You're buying a home because you're ready to buy a home and it's a payment that you could afford. That's, that's the big difference. The percentage of people buying homes in cash in 2021 is over 30%. So 30% of the homes being bought in 2021 were paid in cash. In 2006, only 9% were. So even if the market drops, good luck getting those 30% that put all their cash into the home saying, oh my God, we're gonna walk away. It's just not gonna happen. When supply of homes is already low, and let's say 3.1 million, so let's say a million homes, 300,000 of those homes were bought in cash. You know what I mean? So now you have a supply out of the million, like 700,000. It's just not gonna crash the way people think is. It's just not gonna happen. 2006 won't repeat. And really the biggest X factor here is rates. You know, today, even if you paid twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 more, that's the equivalent of paying 150 bucks more a month. And you're fixed. You're, you don't have a balloon payment. It's not gonna be due in three years. You're good to go for the next 30 years. If anything, I see over the next few years, the government coming out and saying, you know what, just like with cars, cars went from five years average to seven. Don't be surprised if we see a 35 year mortgage or even a 40 year mortgage, which is also going to stop, you know, houses from going down, the payments will get smaller, they're actually going to make house values go up even more. So I know this is a lot of crazy stats that I just threw at you guys. But the reality is, is houses are not going to get you know 2007 levels they're not going to get to that level they're not going to you're not going to see a crash if anything over the next couple of years you're probably going to see houses go up another 30 40 50 thousand dollars so even if there is a crash of like five or ten percent or even twenty percent people are only going to be underwater ten or twenty thousand dollars and they're going to be looking around saying okay maybe on paper my house is worth ten or twenty grand less than what i paid for it but i'm still making the payments screw it i'm good because at that time, you probably would have contributed some amount of money to, 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 to principal. And you're probably only going to be under 10 or 20 grand underwater uh, in a sense of like, you know, let's say you bought a house at 300000 Well, now because of the crash, this, the house is worth like 270000 So you're like, oh, wow, I'm 30 grand under. But then you got to ask yourself, why would you sell? Where are you going to go? Are you going to go rent again? No, you're, you're raising a family now or you're, you're living on your own and you're living your life. You're not going to walk away. And over the course of the next decade, over the course of the next, you know, two decades, that house is going to continue to go up in value and you're going to be above water again, a whale above water, and you're going to be able to continue to pull equity out. So anyone out there that just thinks that, you know, that's, uh, you know, saying houses are going to crash, don't buy a house and, you know, shit like that, they're just looking for clickbait. And they're, look, they're hoping that you click on it, they can sell you on some crazy ass stuff because we know fear sells and they're going to get their views and they're going to move on but they're doing you a disservice because i think it's mentally stopping people from trying to say man i had the house i really wanted but they wanted 10 grand more should i buy should i not like i said i think the perfect time to buy a house is when you're ready if you know you're in a good position if you know that you know you and your significant other or you yourself could could afford the house and you can make the payment you're not making yourself uncomfortable then why, why wouldn't you, you buy a house? It's, you know, if you're renting, you're not building any type of equity. That rent is just going down the drain. And a lot of people rent because, you know, it, it is sometimes cheaper to rent a home or rent a home or rent an apartment than it is to buy a home. But in today's market, it's not. It's ridiculous. It's actually more expensive in certain places to rent than it would have been if you bought the home and just got the, the, the payment fixed. Because essentially what happens is, if you're paying a $1,500 mortgage right now, you're locked in for the next 30 years of that $1,500. Well, if the a rent in your town is like, let's say 12 or 13, eventually that rent over the next decade is gonna get 15 to 1,600, 1,700, 1,800. Over the course of 30 years, the average rent might be 2,500. Well, your payment's been 15 flat, right? So of course you're gonna save in the long run. It doesn't make any sense. So all these people out here selling this fear to you, um, I would probably question, you know, what they're really trying to say and are they, you know, 
are they trying to just get clicks and views to grow their stuff and to get more money because you know if you click on their shit and you watch it there's an ad they get paid or are they being legitimate and they have real concerns but the way I look at it is if you buy a house and you can afford the payment and you're locked in and we have a crazy downturn in the economy and you get laid off and all that well guess what it's not just going to be you it's going to be everybody in the same boat and if you think about it the unemployment and everything we have in place you should be in a position you know for the next six months to be able to make those payments and be able to be okay and get back on your feet so i'm just saying be careful when you see those clickbaity stuff you know and it's like you know everything's gonna crash and you know if you would have listened to those people in 2016 2017 during you know the trump administration and you didn't buy stocks and you didn't buy a house you didn't buy anything you got screwed you missed one of the biggest bull runs you know ever and I'm not saying go ahead and pay 20, 30, 40,000 over just to get the house, you know. It's like, you gotta look at yourself, you gotta look at your budget, and if you could afford it, then it's it's okay in my opinion, in my personal opinion, if you're buying a house to, to live in. It is an investment, but it's not an investment that it has to make sense, like you're gonna make a profit off of it or whatever. No, it's like, if it's right for you and you know that it's time, and you know that you could afford it, and you want to start your life. You know, you can't start your life in an apartment. Um, you can't, you know, and it just goes back to that World Economic Forum when they were like, you will rent everything and you will be happy. It's kind of scary because you guys, you guys saw that I mentioned there's only 1.3 million houses and you got BlackRock buying up all these houses in these suburban areas. And it's like, if you want to live in that area, well, you're gonna have to pay them rent. And most people are content with that. They're like, I don't want to put the down payment down. I'll continue to pay the rent. And I think for anyone following this page or anyone watching this video, um, I think that's the wrong mentality to have, man. You, you want to have equity. You want to have something that you can leave behind to your, your kids, your nieces, your nephew, your somebody, because somebody in your family has to build the wealth for the next generation. And if you don't build that mindset now, then your next generation is probably going to be in the same position that majority of people are in where they're struggling just to make ends meet again, right? So there's a lot of factors that go into it, but you know, I hope this video helped and I hope that somebody out there is also sharing this information like I am saying, you know, just don't buy into the hype and don't buy into the panic and the, the scarcity. I don't know, well, scarcity is the wrong word to use there, but fear, don't buy into the fear and, and you know, make your own decision and, and find facts on both sides. Don't just listen to me. Go out, look up this data yourself and see if it makes sense for you. If you like this video, please uh, like, comment, and freaking share it. Help me, uh, you know, grow the page. All my growth has came from you guys that have shared it and gotten friends to follow. So I appreciate that. I appreciate your guys' time. And whenever you're watching this, I hope you have a good rest of your day.